Oh, hi everyone and welcome back to Not Another Bonsai Channel. Well, you've just caught me in the middle of working on this piece of deadwood. Now you might remember if you caught the first part of this series, this is Andy's Tanuki Challenge and this was the piece of deadwood that he sent me and the challenge was to try to turn this into a Tanuki. So yeah, this is the piece of deadwood that uh, Andy uh, sent me, Andy from Bonsai Crazy. Uh, so thanks again, Andy, for sending this to me. Yeah, so when I received this, I was thinking, what you know, what am I going to do with it? You know, what, what what tree can I put with this, and how can I turn it into a tanuki? And I came out with a brilliant idea. So I don't know if you've ever been out to the forest and you've seen these really old ash trees. You know, the ones that have been there for hundreds and hundreds of years, and uh, it's only the outer ring or the outer portion that's still alive. So the the core of the tree is rotted away and just decayed over time. And you might even see photos of people sitting inside these trees, a little bit like ancient yew trees. I'll show you a few photos just up here and you get a full sense of what I have in mind and what kind of design I want to try to put onto this tanuki and ultimately, you know, what kind of uh, planting I, I plan to create. So my aim was to try to create that kind of effect on this piece of deadwood. <laughs> now to do that, what I'm going to have to do is come in here with a tool and try to carve away a lot of this inner material so that all we end up with is the outer section, the outer sort of ring of material. Now, I do ideally want to keep, you know, still keep some of these branches going, you know, going off in different directions. That's all going to add to the overall effect that this tree has been there for years and years and years and years and years in the center of it as, as rotted away over time. But if we are going to do that to this piece of deadwood, we have to have a tool or use a tool that can carve away that amount of material. And uh, thinking about the tools in my shed, I think the best tool for the job is a chainsaw. So I have the piece of deadwood on my bench here. It's kind of a beat up bench. You know, I've had this for a while. I've carried out several projects on this bench. So, you know, it's, uh, it's, been, th it's been through a lot. So it's had quite a lot of abuse. But uh, my idea here was to just cut down here, cut where you see these arrows, go straight down and try to flatten off this, this base a little bit more so that it sits better into the pot. And that isn't looking too bad. That's pretty good. Right, so the next thing I want to do, I want to try to position this into the, the bench somehow that I could, you know, I can get access to this area here. So it's just a case of trying to weave this in between the, the two parts of the bench, just in here like so. Now I don't want to go too far back. I do want to leave at least half an inch circumference all the way around, maybe a little bit more. Uh, yeah, I might leave a bit more. I might come in slightly from the line because I can always tidy this up later with my Dremel. But just for now, we need to get rid of the majority of this material so take the guard off and uh, let's begin so that's made that groove that's not looking too bad right now we need to make another groove because we just gradually need to work our way around so you can see that's gone quite deep we're just going to continue that round And hopefully this little slither should should come out. Maybe not. Let's go in there with the saw again. There you go. And our groove is starting to appear. If we just swing this bench around a little bit more, you can see. Or oh, sorry for the noise. You can see we're beginning to make a channel in here and it's starting to come together. So I will need to flip this over to get to the bottom side. But before I do that, I did just want to tackle this. I do ideally want to hollow this out slightly and then try to marry this up with this. <laughs> right, so I have this positioned upside down out on my uh, bench. Now, this is going to be a bit of a challenge because ideally I did want to keep this root. This is going to act as a good uh, Nabari root or surface root on the overall design. 
I, I will try to shape this up with the Dremel and with my carving tools at a later date, but today we're focused on blocking out the central material. Uh, so cutting this section here should be easy. I'm going to have to try to sort of cut it in at an angle here and then try to hollow out all of this. So I did just want to try to tidy up some of this uh, section, inside section here, because this is slightly deeper than this bit that I've just done. Right, so that I think is looking pretty good. It's not looking too bad. I quite like that. I've hollowed out the middle section. I've hollowed out this section. Again, it does look a bit crude, a bit rough at this stage, but you know, I've only done this with the chainsaw just to hollow out the bulk of the material. So yeah, thanks for joining me on this one. It's going to be real, real fun watching how this project develops over the upcoming parts. I'm going to do this in several parts because it's, it's going to be a project that's going to develop over the coming years. So this is part two. Part three will be coming where we do all the work with the Dremel. And then there'll be part four, part five, part six, and so on and so forth going on into the future. But it's going to be a really fun project. And it'd be really interesting to see how this, uh, you know, how these little ash trees develop and ultimately end up looking like a really majestic looking old ash tree that's been standing out in the forest for hundreds of years. It's just, it's going to look brilliant. Now I must just say, do not copy what I've just done in this video. If you are not confident and competent using a chainsaw, I have had experience with chainsaw carving in the past. I have used a chainsaw many, many times and I'm comfortable with doing so. Uh, only use the tools that you are comfortable with using. I must stress that because I'm only doing this because I'm comfortable with using a chainsaw. If you're not, do not watch this video and think, oh, well, Gav's done it, it must be okay. Only do it if you fully understand the instructions that came with your, your chainsaw and you know how it works and you're comfortable with using it. So yeah, th thanks again for joining me on this one. Um, be very interested in seeing how the Tanuki project develops over the upcoming months and years. And as always, guys, until then, have a great day, take it easy, and I'll catch you on the next one.